Hi, John Kavakis here for another edition of My Take. And this is one of those editions that I get excited over. I get to present to you a brand new model. And what we're going to see for the first time in person is Brooklyn's limited edition Pope John Paul II 40th anniversary Fiat Campagnola. Uh, so the Fiat Campagnola started production in 1951. The utility vehicle designed to function a little bit like a Jeep. Um, it was around for quite some time, fairly popular workhorse, had gas engines, diesel engines, and it was upgraded in 1974, stayed in production till 1987 uh, with a new gas engine, 1,005 cc's, up to 80 horsepower. You could get diesels up to 72 horsepower. So it was a fixture around Italy, uh, but that doesn't tell you what this has to do with Pope John Paul II. So let me explain this. Now, for since the, near the turn of the century, uh, the Pope had personal transportation. He had a variety of cars that he rode around in. As a matter of fact, you can see six of those models available uh, on the Brooklyn website, modeled after cars that are in the, the Vatican Museum. Uh, they're beautiful models. They've got a wonderful history. They're well made. You can go over there and take a look at them. Uh, so for over a thousand years, though, around the Vatican City, and in St. Peter's Square, the Pope has been ferried around in a seat called the Sedia Gestatoria. Now, this was a large, ornate seat uh, that was carried on the shoulders of the Swiss Guard. Tell you about them in just a little bit. Um, and it was made to show some respect for the Pope, but mostly to make him visible to the crowd. So he was a little bit elevated. Now, Pope John Paul II discontinued use of the Sedia Gestatoria in 1978 and began to ride around in specially prepared cars that, that were made to allow him to be visible, uh, yet be a little more like the common man than, than the Sedia Gestatoria showed. So, uh, he, you know, Pope John Paul was a gracious individual, beautiful man. Uh, but he had a little bit of a sense of humor, too. And he actually encouraged the press to use the term Pope Mobile, starting in 1978, any time he was riding in a car. So in 1980, Fiat presented to the Pope a new Campagnola uh, for his personal transportation, in particular around Vatican City and around St. Peter's Square. Uh, so there was a big event in St. Peter's Square on May 13, 1981, and that event was attended by a man called Muhammad al Agka. Uh, now, he was angry uh, that the Pope was uh, planning a trip to Turkey that year, and he tried to assassinate the Pope. He actually shot him four times. The Pope was shot twice in the abdomen, once in the left pinky finger, and again in the right arm. Uh, and, it, you know, those are pretty serious injuries. Uh, now, Agka was immediately apprehended by the Swiss Guard. I don't know if you've ever seen the Swiss Guard. Kelly and I have been to the Vatican a couple times. Um, they have these very ornate, very brightly covered uniforms, but don't let them fool you. These guys are as tough as nails, and you don't want to mess with them. They were aided by a, an aggressive nun who saw what happened and helped them uh, tackle Agka. So you don't want to mess with the nuns either. Uh, so, Agka had an accomplice uh, who was supposed to set off a bomb to distract everybody, uh, but the, the accomplice saw what was going on and he panicked and he ran. And the site of that shooting is now commemorated uh, by a little plaque in St. Peter's Square that has a coat of arms of Pope John Paul II on it. Uh, so, now here's where the story gets interesting. Pope John Paul II recovered from those wounds. Now, it, it, some people think that was a miracle in, in, in itself. Uh, uh, I, I happen to agree with them. Uh, but he not only recovered, but he made a very public showing of going to the prison where they held Agka and forgiving him. He not only forgave him, but he encouraged the Italian president to pardon him, which the Italian, pre Italian president did. Now, that wasn't the end of Edgar's problems. Uh, he was wanted in Turkey for the murder of a newspaper man, and so he was extradited to Turkey where he was imprisoned, and he stayed there until 2010. He was released in 2010, and here's where the story gets even more amazing. Uh, the Pope made an effort to become friends with Agka. 
He corresponded with him. He wrote to him while he was in prison. He visited him when he came out. Uh, there was all sorts of amazing things happening. And when the Pope died, Eka actually went to the Pope's tomb on the 31st anniversary of the assassination attempt and placed flowers on the tomb and made a statement about what a great guy he was. Uh, so I just think that's absolutely fantastic. Now, Brooklyn has commemorated this event with this limited edition version of the Campagnola. And they very justly pr probably are presenting uh, a special edition of this, uh, which is marked by two actually incredible features. Uh, there are two figurines that are hand-painted uh, by a famous Italian artist named Roberto Verardi, um, who was a pioneer in 135, 135th uh, scale model soldiers, but he's also well known in the fashion world, he's also well known in the art world, and he's hand painted these things. Uh, so this model comes in a limited edition of only 99 pieces. They've been taking orders for a while, but they're going to be shipping them soon, and there's still an opportunity to have them. So we're going to take it out and take a look at it. Uh, we got Brooklyn's typical packaging here. Uh, there's, a, uh, there's a great booklet showing all of the Vatican models, a little statement on this limited edition in the back. I love this saying right here, it's not just white metal, it's a Brooklyn. We all know what that means, don't we? So let's get this out here and take a look at it. Oh, it's very well packed. Now I've seen the Campagnola, the Vatican Campagnola before, and it is beautiful, uh, it's well detailed, but this one comes with these, these neat little surprises. I just love this kind of stuff in a model and Brooklyn's done a beautiful job on it. So there's the model and very carefully packed away is a model of the Pope again hand painted by Verardi. I love that. We'll place him in there and we'll take a look at this. Now the, the detail work on the Campagnola is really fantastic. Uh, they uh, it, it's just Brooklyn does such a great job with this sort of thing. The, the Vatican flags are there. Uh, a lot of the hardware is picked out in black. The wheels are beautiful. Uh, the seat, the red carpeting in that, uh, the dash, everything. It, it, it's just a nice model. But what makes this really unique are these two figurines. And what you're going to have to look at these in person to see how well they're done. So many 143rd figurines are uh, awkwardly painted but this is exquisite in its detail the, you can see the features of the pope it looks like the pope you can see the, the necklace that he's wearing the driver is very well detailed it looks very natural this is just an incredible representation of a moment frozen in time the moment just before the shots were fired again they're only making 99 of these uh, if you want one you're going to have to move quickly on it uh, you can order it today on the Brooklyn website. So this is, this is Brooklyn's representation of the limited edition Pope John Paul II 40th anniversary Fiat Campagnola. I hope if you get it, you enjoy it as much as I've enjoyed taking a look at it. Hey, thanks for, for joining me. If you have just a few seconds, I would ask you to go down here to the bottom uh, right of it uh, on YouTube and subscribe to my channel. Hit the little like button there. That'll help me out with the channel. I'll be back to talk to you again real soon.